Okay, we are going to pull the steering box out. You see it's oily down under there. The seal on the bottom is leaking. So uh, kind of give you a how-to on doing that. First thing we're going to do is we'll get the uh, steering lines off. And then we got to get this cap off. Okay, we've got the uh, lines loosened up or disconnected and bolt cover cover bolts off and tap that with a hammer just a little bit to kind of break the seal on the o-ring to get it to turn and then uh, go ahead Alan you kind of twist and pull up at the same time you turn it to where you can get your fingers under the ears then maybe and maybe we'll have to get some kind of little pry bar under there Could be suction holding it in. Yeah. Where's that screwdriver? That's what I'm looking for. Does it have a gasket on it? Nope, it's sealed by an o ring. I have to go back and forth between sides. Or... All right. seals that is this o-ring right here for this top cover now we need to pull this you might be able to do that with your screwdriver it might take two of them one from each side so this cap has got a little oh, lip on it to grab it and take a couple screwdrivers and pry up and boom that's got an o-ring on it as well now inside here you're going to see a bolt and you're going to see a snap ring and you might think i got to take this snap ring out but you don't that's actually to help remove it so i find this works best with an impact so we will grab that okay so we are going to hit this with impact we leave that snap ring in and go ahead and hit her alan As you can see, that bolt, the washer is welded to it, and it hits that snap ring, and it draws the uh, gear up off the shaft for you. That's why you don't want to remove the snap ring. Now we just need to, uh, that's off, so yeah, that's loose. We don't need that anymore. This is also the part where you're going to want a good sized uh, pan of some kind, because the oil that's in the steering box is going to come out the bottom. You'll also want to notice there's a dot right there and a dot right here and there will be a dot on the rack and either one of those dots will work but you want to get one of those dots lined up with the dots there to get the timing right or you'll steer, steer farther one way than the other. But I don't know if you can grab that Allen and get that out. Sometimes I have to use a pair of pliers on, to bite onto it. and. It's kind of slippery and smooth and all that good stuff. Yeah, you where's them channel lots? You away. probably put them away. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we put this glove around here and then gripped it with a pair of channel locks to get a good bite. And that was all it took to get this gear to finish coming off the shaft. As you can see, that bolt's kind of captured in there. It's on tapered splines here and then there is a quad ring down on the bottom of the box here that's what's letting the oil seep out on this one if it's coming out the bottom it's got to come through that quad ring or the other option is if this the cap goes in the top of the uh, this here that seals the oil from going down around the shaft so one of those two that lets the oil out if it's coming out the bottom but it's usually that quadrant because it turns 
against this gear here and just you know dirt and stuff it over the years it, rubber gets hard it gets ground down and it stops sealing i turned the piston just a little bit so we could see the dot a little better but there's the dot that you need to line up with the dot or the gear on that dot on that gear needs to line up with that dot that dot and there's one on each side because they're 180 degrees off so either one works but if you get off by one tooth, you'll steer farther one direction than the other. I've had to uh, take one or two apart over the years because someone didn't line up the dots and steering went to, couldn't figure out why their steering was farther one way than the other. Okay, now to, uh, this stud just floats in this drag link. So all you gotta do is just lift. That'll pull up out of that like that. And there's your steering box. So let's, uh, Get that apart. Okay, we're gonna disassemble this. There's a snap ring that holds this cap here in. And that's what this hole is for. You take this little, and it can be a nail. I guess you grind a point off from it, but just gotta be something that fits in the hole and flat and give it a little tap. And it goes and pushes the snap ring down. And then There you go. There's the snap ring. And pull that thingy back out. Now we need to get this cap out. I don't know if you can turn that. I mean, it's just the O-rings in there, but just turning it kind of breaks the seal that the O-rings get. Might work if you, uh, Maybe not. You can always blow air in one end. The oil comes out the other. Maybe just tap it. You know what? Let's try. Huh? You can do that. I think I saw it turn. It did. Oh, that should have broke the... All right, now let's hang the end of that over. Okay, so we got, got the oil out of this end by holding it over the bucket and turn that end to, now he's just kind of gently tapping on the rack to get this cap to come out the end there. It's coming. There it goes. There's the cap. Oh, there's some more oil. <laughs> the other end of the. Oh, careful, that that'll okay, fall out. That piston. Okay. <laughs> the piston will fall out if you turn it. Right, now you can drain it. That end was the end facing out. What these little uh, pins are right here, this is the hole on the opposite side. There's a little check ball in there on each end. And if this piston seals get bad, and are letting oil buy out into this chamber that could make it get over pressurized and blow the seals. And so what it does is this it has a spring and a check ball on it. And so if the pressure gets high enough when you're going one way, well, it, it can only go to the side it's returning because you've got steering pressure. Say if your steering pressure is coming to this side, it's gonna go through here, keep that ball seated on this side. But if it's leaking through past this 
ring, it can unseat this ball and return with the other return oil as the rack moves that way. So that's just there to keep the, uh, the steering box from getting uh, overpressurized and uh, making the seals fail. So now we just got to get these uh, seals picked off and wash up the box and we can put her back together. Okay, we're going to get the new O-rings and uh, Teflon seals on. There's the O-ring. I've already misplaced placed my pick. It was just, there it is. My O-ring pick. <laughs> Let's go around like that. Now, these can be a little tougher. Sometimes it helps to soak them in warm water, makes them a little more pliable. Kind of depends on the time of the year. They, in the winter time, they're stiffer just because it's colder out. But that one didn't go bad at all. And we just put another O-ring here. Do it. Get in there. I like to go around a couple times like that because if there's any twist in the O-ring, it kind of lets it work its way out. Carefully. Don't need to twist it. There we go. And it's in. So now we need to, we'll set this up in the vise. Maybe. We're running out of, there we go. There's a beveled edge, chamfered edge right around here. It helps guide those seals in and squish them down. Um, and we'll make sure that's good and clean so they don't drag across it. So put a film of grease on these seals. So they want to slide in easier. And I like to do the same here and I do recall I don't know if it really matters but this drill hole was on the outside end just like that I almost stuck my hand in there I think could have dropped fast and that would have hurt Like that. Okay. <laughs> All right, now it's ready to engage. You can see the seal is just down there. We got it just up here. So we just need to give her the old um, bump de bump. Okay. So we just. There. Something you want to watch for is down in the hole here. If you see uh, blue from the Teflon seal, you know you cut it. I've just got the red from my grease here. There's no little bits of Teflon, so it looks like it went in nice and smooth. So now we just got to put the cap on the end here. There 
Yeah, okay, so we'll put the O-ring in here first so that uh, it doesn't get sliced going past the snap ring groove. And then this has got a chamfer on it to help ease it into the snap or the uh, O-ring. There, looks like it's in all the way. Now we just need to put the snap ring in. When you do it, you wanna have the opening a little past this uh, hole that you earlier uh, stuck the rod in to push the snap ring out. If you happen to have the opening of the groove right with that hole, you're not gonna get anywhere with pushing that out. So somewhere just a little past works good. There. That part is rebuilt. I'm gonna put a little air to it just to make sure. I got a rubber tipped air hose here to try to. <laughs> we'll wait. I got a rubber tipped nozzle so it seals up halfway decent here. You don't want to be in the line with anything that might fly out just in case you didn't get it right, but come on, push. It's already down. Yeah, it's already down, but I'm just looking, looking for air. I'm not hearing any. I'm just going to put some penetrating oil around this just to give something to give bubbles if it's leaking. Seen anything? Nope. I see the original bubbles going away, but no new ones forming. Cool beans. That looks like she sealed up good. And then we could try the other direction. You don't want to be, uh, this is going to push the rack over that way. So I want to just do a little air at first. Because yeah. I don't want it to shoot over there real fast. Seems to be holding the air you were hearing with my air chuck here. See if I can get it better. Yeah, she seems to be holding good. Decompressed so fast it even made a little cloud. Well, I think that's ready to go back in the tractor. So that'll be the next step. I've got a new quad ring to put in the bottom there. And I'll flip the box over. Here's the Agco part number for it. Here's the old one. They call it a quad ring. It's a rubber O-ring like normal O-rings other than it has four sides to it and it seals better. Got the steering box flipped over. This can be done in the tractor. I've done it before. Pulling this gear out and uh, if that's the only thing that's leaking is it's leaking around the bottom. It takes a little bit because the shaft is still... This shaft will still be coming up through the middle, so it takes a little finesse and reaching down in there. But, but it can be done. And you don't have to disconnect all the steering lines and pull.
pull this out if all you want to do is replace this bottom quad ring, which that's usually where the leak is. Come here, just that simple. I'll put some grease on it so everything slides together a little smoother and I can set this baby back in the tractor. It's a fairly tight fit, but it will fit in there without pulling the engine on a 1650 anyways. There are some tractors, things get close enough. Um, seems like an 1850 diesel with Perkins comes to mind, but <coughs> excuse me. You have to remove the pulley and balancer to get enough room to get the ear of the steering box up past there. Seems like uh, two 135s and two 155s. Seems like I remember having to pull the front pulley on those in order to get the box off. Definitely got to get the radiator off to get up, get it up out of there if you're going to do that. That's why I said, uh, said a moment ago that if you want to change the that quadring down in the bottom sometimes it's easier just to leave it in there and in case like that where you have to pull the front pulley or something it's a lot easier to leave it in there so it just depends on what all you want to do to your box Got the pin in the hole, maybe, maybe not. There it goes. All right, now we just need to uh, that rack's a little uh, lopsided or turned. Need to get that straightened out so that I can see the mark on it, make sure things get timed right. As we can see, there's the dot. So let's see, I got my dot there. Looks like I got my dots lined up good. Now I just need to get it to line up enough to drop through the bottom of the case. Could be the splines on the, the steer or the wheels. Front wheels might turn, need to turn just a little bit to line up the splines on the inside of that hub or gear. You should go down further than that. Just have to get a pry bar and move the steer the steer the wheels by hand. Guess I'll grab the old rubber mallet, give her a tongue. You know you came out of there.
There we go. Get a wrench and tighten that bolt up. When I hold her up like that, I can see my sprockets, uh, my gear and rack are aligned. My dots. Well, the splines inside this gear and on the shaft are a tapered spline. So they lock together so you want to tighten that down good so you don't get any slop in there this one was actually loose when we took it apart so this should help tighten up the steering a little more Guys. Okay, next up is that cap. It seals this up. Make sure that lip part is on top that you use to pry it out. Get in there. I greased it up. Of course. It's a uh, Got, it's basically trying to compress air in there too. If it's sealed up good, I guess I could hit it with a rubber mallet instead of the hand hammer, as someone put in the comments. But it's in there. And before we put the final cap on, we want to put some oil in there. Just double checking, my dots are lined up, so I'll get some oil. I use the same hydraulic oil that I use in the hydraulic unit because well, that's what's going to be in there. If the seals on the rack should leak, they're going to leak hydraulic oil or if the pressure builds up and the little relief valves that are building each end of the rack open up, it's going to go into the hydraulic system. So you want to use the same stuff you're using in your hydraulics. And if hydraulic oil comes pouring out the bottom, you know you did something wrong. Left out the quad ring, sheared the quad ring. There, I leave a little air space for the lid. I probably didn't leave enough air space. I guess we'll find out in a moment. Got a new uh, O-ring on the lid here, got it greased up. So it slides in a little better. And once again, it's going to try to compress air. You don't want to hit her too hard. But I'm not even down to the O-ring yet. Rubber mallet. This cap is cast iron so it can break. Now we're down to the o-ring and I can see it's trying to bubble oil out. I should have left a little more air space in there. Now I guess we'll draw it down the rest of the way with the bolts.
That drew up with very little resistance. Probably just uh, fighting, compressing the oil in there because everything's sealed up good. Oh, some come out around the back here. Yep, I had just a hair too much in there. But if the pressure gets high enough, it'll open those internal relief valves and put it out the end. So we should be good. A little bit there, a little bit there. Before the oil ring got seated. I don't see any bits of O-ring. That's always good too. Oops, wrong ratchet. Now I'll just have to hook up and the steering lines and uh, it should be all done. Pretty straightforward. repair appreciate everybody watching as always and we'll see you in the next one working on it stage this whole video was staged yeah. <laughs>